Hey, the music guy is still busy mixing and mastering the score for my short film. I totally did not expect him to be this professional about it. What's up, it's the Culture Detective here investigating your favorite TV shows, and today I'm going to do a TV review on Succession Season 1. So Succession is an HBO TV show created by Jesse Armstrong. And, um, yeah, about a year and a half ago, I tried to watch Succession, and maybe it was because I was in a bad mood on that day. Maybe it was because I was just feeling really tired or bored on that day, but after half an episode, I just dropped it. I was just too bored, I was just very impatient, and I just dropped it. I don't like a lot of things about it. The very awkward, the office-esque zoom-ins and shots that are very shaky, the very awkward dialogues, and the fact that none of the characters are likable at all just really bothered me. But anyways, recently in August of 2021, I decided to return to Succession and I basically watched it from episode 1 to 10, the entire season 1. And, um... First of all, um, I enjoy it. I think it is uh, pretty good. But it's not without its flaws. But I think, first of all, we need to talk about the opening sequence. One of the most important things in a TV show, in a series, is the opening sequence. And I'm really fucking glad that Succession had brought the opening sequence back. After TV shows like The Lost, a lot of TV shows basically abandoned the opening title sequence. TV shows like The Handmaid's Tale, The Boys, and also Mr. Robot. Even though Mr. Robot title cards are super fancy, but they have abandoned the opening sequence. But I love a good opening sequence. Mad Men opening sequence, Westworld opening sequence, Game of Thrones, True Detective. Hell yeah, I love them. So I'm really glad that Succession had brought them back with cool visuals as well as an awesome killer kick-ass opening theme, which is so good. I liked it on Spotify. And uh, yeah, the plot of Succession is essentially a dysfunctional family, a very rich family at the same time. The father of the family is played by Brian Cox, and his name is Logan Roy, one of the most powerful men in the world, the CEO of a multi-company, super huge company, Waystar Royco. And his son, Kendall Roy, wanted to succeed and become the next CEO, while we have the sister, Siobhan Roy, as well as the other brother, Roman Roy, and then the other brother, Connor Roy, and it's all really dysfunctional. They all secretly hate each other, and then there's the stepmother character, Marsha, who hates the children, and they all hate each other, and want to backstab each other, and just want power and control. And even though this TV show is not political, it is very much political because it is about control. It is about backstabbing, lying, telling lies, secrets. It is about conspiracies, coercing with other people, and uh, it is uh, very much political in that sense. But anyways, needless to say, I think the first three episodes are pretty boring even though they have their highlights. I think the awkward dialogue the uh, very awkward cinematography and the slow story building just doesn't help at all. But at around episode 4, the pace picks back up and it becomes so much more engaging as we see the dynamic between Logan Roy and his son Kendall Roy, uh, played by Jeremy Strong. And they sort of hate each other and they want to gain power. Logan Roy basically fell sick in the beginning of the of the story and Kendall Roy wants to basically well he was originally told that he was gonna be CEO and then Logan Roy changed his mind Logan Roy suddenly got sick so Kendall wanted to use that as an opportunity to become the CEO and then Logan Roy got better and then now there's this huge confusing fight between the two with the families constantly changing sides and honestly i am a sucker for this kind of shit i love stories about power 
control and manipulation and just people backstabbing and lying to each other. I, I love stories like this, man. It's my favorite genre of, of any story ever. Episode 6 is easily my favorite episode of the entire season so far. I think um, it is blood pumping, it is intense, it is, um, it, it, it's really close call and uh, I love the ending scene. It is shocking, it is uh, crazy and um, I can't spoil what happens but episode 6 is truly my favorite one. It is basically all the political power control betrayal stuff all amped up to 11. And then on episode 7 to 8, we see more family dynamic, which becomes more and more engaging. Even though at that point, I still pretty much hate every single character. Logan Roy is a prideful, selfish old man. Kendall Roy is also really prideful and selfish, but also stupid. Roman Roy is, uh, um, he's played by uh, Kieran Culkin, who also showed up in uh, Scott Pilgrim. He's also the brother of Macaulay Culkin. But uh, yeah, he's this really impulsive, rude person who doesn't know what he's doing. Siobhan isn't really that likable of a character. Siobhan's husband is uh, the definition of a beta male. And then we have Greg, who is this really awkward nephew of Logan Roy. And he clearly doesn't know what he's doing. And he's being very clumsy about everything. Pretty much every single character is hateable. The stepmother character is hateable as well. Everybody sucks. They all suck ass. And none of them are making good decisions at all. Throughout the entire season, we just see them messing up again and again and again and again and again, making bad decisions left and right. This is actually quite painful and frustrating to watch all of these come down. But uh, that's pretty much episode 7 to 8, which turns out to be more compelling and engaging than I thought it would be. Episode 9 is a bit of a slow point, but it certainly builds up to the finale of season 1, which actually is a little slow paced at first, but uh, the ending is incredibly shocking. And it's also quite shocking to see um, how it all happened for Kendall. And um, yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm just going to leave it at that. I like Succession Season 1. And um, yeah, the awkward dialogue, the awkward zoom-ins, the very awkward, shaky cinematography certainly takes some time for me to get used to them. But I think once I, I'm used to this type of cinematography and, and, and dialogue, I manage to enjoy the story way much more. And uh, this is also easily one of the most cynical TV shows I've ever watched, to be honest. Like, all of the characters suck. They're all bastards. None of them are good. They all suck. And everything sucks. The institution, the system, the politics sides, the political sides, the business sides, the uh, journalistic sides. Everything sucks. Everyone is corrupted to to a freaking low point and uh, <laughs> I just really like stories like that you know uh, I think the music is great um, in a lot of ways this reminds me of House of Cards because of the political stuff power control but also because of the music it's just so orchestral so grand and I think the performances are great if the actors for Tom and Greg actually act like this in real life wow the casting is amazing. If they don't act like this in real life, then their acting is amazing because they're really convincing in their roles. They're really convincing. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. My favorite episode is episode 6. My least favorite might be episode 1 or 2. I'm giving Succession Season 1 uh, light 8 out of 10. So if you watch Succession from 1 to 10, I'm just rate it, like if you like it, and subscribe if you want more, and thanks for watching.